Hello there, you're welcome back to Biology Real Lectures with Akirili Oladimiji Philip. It's my lovely ple pleasure to have you with me. On today's edition, we move on to question um, 2015 of the past questions we've been doing in our UTME. So get your writing materials and let's get to work. All right, it says here a tissue is composed of a group of dash. That should be a group of cells or let's say similar cells. All right, so let's see what that looks like in a minute. So basically, this apparently is a muscle cell, just a single cell. Now, this actually is not a typical cell. This is a specialized cell, which means a cell that has only a type of function or that is a only type of function. So this is a muscle cell. So looking at this, you can see this is a single cell, single cell coming together like that. So these are each of these cells are similar to form a tissue like that, and which this tissue forms a part of this organ called um, stomach, and of course, you know, collection of organs forms system or organ system, as the case may be. All right. The population of different organisms that exist together, keywords, population of different organisms exist together in a habitat is called what? Like I always tell you, try to pause the video first, try to attempt the question before listening to the answer. So that should form a community, a community. Collection of different population forms a community. Now this is what we're trying to say now. This is an individual here. This first organism here is the just single one. Then a group of the same species that can interbreed to have the same offspring like they are is population that you cannot see population of gazelle of zebra or buffalo of lion or vulture that forms a community all right then if you now say all this community which is seen here like different communities like that plus their environment that forms the ecosystem so to say so this is very important to understand the hierarchy of um, um levels in ecology all right different population means um community and um, the same um individuals that can interbreed forms a population so to say all right which of the following serves as the brain box in human Okay. Okay. Brain box actually is meant to be a bony structure, so that's going to be skull. So this is what we're trying to say here. Let me explain something. The answer is skull. Now, really, this is the entire skull as it were. I just put around that. However, the the brain is actually found in this part called cranium, that way, which is called brain case. Well. This other part is called facial bone. So we can say that the skull is made up of two types of bones, the cranium that covers the brain and the facial bone, basically. So these two um, forms the uh, skull as it were. Of course, from this option, the only thing we can see here is the skull. If you pick head, head is wrong because head has muscles and all of those things there. So it's not, but we, we are already dealing with um, the bony structure there. Which organ removes the largest amount of excess water from the body? All right, let me quickly tick the ones that removes water, and that will be lungs re removes water. How? When we breathe out, like I'm breathing out now, some amount of water vapor comes out from my breath. Now, how can I confirm that? Just get a mirror and breathe onto that. You're going to see some sort of steam like that. Or you can also see this if you are locked in the car and the AC isn't working or it isn't on. You're going to see that with time, the windscreen becomes um, cloudy in, in the car. That's to tell you that what that comes out. Then the kidney passes out urine and the skin passes out um, sweat. Among these three, the kidney passes out the, the, uh, the largest amount of fluid or water, so to say. So the answer there is kidney. 
A group of organisms of the same kind inhabiting, for, don't forget this word, this, these words, the same kind inhabiting, living in the same place, in the, in the same environment is called, of course, a population. I, I told you that not quite long. We had that here. Yes, population. They live together. They can interbreed. They live. They, they look alike. They are, they are like the, they are the same organism, so to say, the same um, species. All right. The light sensitive cell in the human eyes is called the retina. I wish I'm not sure I have that there, but if you were to draw the human eye like something like that like that sorry that's not well drawn it has three layers the innermost layer is made up of what we call retina which is made up of two type of cells that are called photo cells photopigments it is called cones and rods cone responds to bright light or let me say day vision we use it during the day or bright light let's say let me use the word bright bright light and also helps us pick colors or substances of objects while rods is used in dim light so we use rod to see at night and also helps to perceive uh, let's say the black and the white part of an object basically all right so these two together are called photopigments which are found where in the retina which is the innermost layer of the eyes so the answer here is going to be retina you can see that d there has been put to confuse you but once you put you've picked c of course cone is in the retina so c covers that already all right the earliest form of life in animal kingdom is okay now let me from what we have here okay let me arrange them the earliest means the last one to have evolved so let me normally for code it this is what you have you have what, what i call i call it param p a r a m what do i mean the p is Pisces, which are fishes, the A is amphibia, which are the likes of frogs, toads, and all of that. Then um, R is reptilia or reptiles. Then the second A is A's, which are birds. Then the last one is mammals. Mammalia, like it is called, or mammals. Now, as you move from Pisces downward the organism becomes more advanced which means this pisces is the least advanced mammal is the most advanced or the most recent one so here in us is the earliest form the earliest form which is like the earliest form should be oh the earliest form should be the oldest yes like the the, the first set should be the oldest and looking at this of course your answer is going to be Pisces. That's the oldest, the earliest. If you guys know, I said the, the latest, then you're going to pick, let's say, from this option, you're going to pick A's. All right. But as it is, they say the earliest form is going to be the Pisces. All right. That's because the most, like, it's like saying the oldest, so to say. All right. Which of the following diseases is not sexually transmitted? Okay. Okay, gonorrhea is STD, herpes is STD, syphilis is STD, influenza, which we also call flu, all right, is airborne. So it's not um, sexually transmitted, so the answer is C. Don't forget that gonorrhea, herpes, and syphilis are all STDs, but um, uh, influenza, which we also call flu, F-L-U, is airborne and it's not STD. Which of the following is not a monocotyledonous seed? That which means that it is a dicot, it has two seed leaves, and um, that's gonna be option A. All right, so let me show you that in a moment. Yes, this is a dicot, it has 
seed lead seed leaf one and seed leaf two while this one has only one seed leaf so the likes of maize millet and wheat are all monocot they just have one one seed leaf they have something like this 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 part is called endosperm endosperm which means that it's that will provide energy for the developing young plant or embryo so to say the same thing for dicot too this dicot part will provide energy for the developing um, plants or say that you can see oh beautiful it is written there stored food so to say so that could have two seed leaves an example is your copy from these options the lowest unit of classification is the of course if you can remember what we have kingdom phylum or division class order family genus and species so the lowest is going to be species which makes option d the correct answer there one of the following diseases is caused by fungi or fungi well anytime you see the word mosaic these two they are caused by viruses so those ones are ruled out um, leaf blight of cassava is caused by bacteria or bacterial infection so to say it's a bacterial infection so the answer is coffee leaf rust this is caused by fungi and it's going to look like this in the plants this is a terrible thing affecting photosynthesis and production of food in this kind of plant where it is found so this is coffee leaf rust caused by fungi well because our mosaic and tomato mosaic are caused by viruses when the, while the um, leaf blight of cassava is caused cassava rosate is caused by um, bacteria all right the byproduct of photosynthesis is before we do that let's look at this quickly now normally Carbon dioxide, of course, combines with water in the presence of sunlight, which was attracted by chlorophyll, to form glucose, really. So, the product of photosynthesis is really glucose, while oxygen is the waste product. So, the answer is going to be B. Now, there's this question that students often get confused with. It can say that where was oxygen obtained from? In reality, let me use this symbol equation down here. What actually happened is uh, there's something called photolysis that happens in the light reaction stage of photosynthesis, and that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen components. So this oxygen component is what is given off as waste product. So in case you want to, you can be asked. I've seen that before in UTM that what produces or where where does um, oxygen come from it comes from the splitting of water so it is this hydrogen that is being added to carbon dioxide by by a reduction process because uh, uh, reduction is addition of hydrogen so adding adding hydrogen to this co2 forms what we have here of course it's not that simple anyways it's going to happen through scavenging cycle during the dark reaction stage as it were so that's like a summary of what happens in photosynthesis so oxygen is a waste product which is obtained by the splitting of water all right gaseous exchange in the lungs takes place in the alveoli let me explain let me arrange this to you in the right order it's meant to be if you want to talk about like i'm breathing in now how the air will go is this it's going to go to the trachea from these options trachea number one number two bronchi or bronchi number two then number three is going to be bronchioles then number four is going to be what alveoli so that looks somewhat like this here so this is the alveoli alveolus singular just one and um, this singular one here but you can see alveoli this uh, this is a one that's another one that's plural now what happens basically is simple what happens is that the air we breathe in which is oxygen goes in there because the amount of oxygen is more inside the air sac in the alveolus singular it moves into the bloodstream by diffusion at the same time because the amount of carbon dioxide in the blood is small than in the air sac so carbon dioxide moves like that into the um, air sac of the alveolus 
then it's been exhaled out. In case you are asked that by what process is gaseous exchange happening in the alveolus or alveolar either way, the answer should be by gaseous exchange, sorry, by diffusion, please. In eukaryotic cells, cellular respiration takes place in eukaryotic cell, please, in the mitochondria. What are eukaryotic cells? Are uh, cells that have that have a nucleus, basically. Those are called eukaryotic cells, like these. These two are eukaryotic cells. Why? They both have nucleus there. I just pointed those out, and they have mitochondrion, that's singular, or mitochondria plural, with which they break down. Um, release make energy from the food they've obtained in various ways one of the following causes one of the following causes ebola fever well ebola is caused by virus so that's why you said ebola virus so to say so it's caused by viruses not by fungi not by protozoa not by bacteria the theory of survival of the fittest was proposed by who that's by charles robert darwin he's the one that talked about natural selection that all the way through will always be in the continuous struggle to stay alive so the one that has the best adaptive features to stay alive will survive and it will pass that feature to its offspring and and all of that continues that way talking about theory of evolution Now, let me go back there. Let me explain some few things. This person, Hook, Robert Hook, talked about cell. Uh, Gene Lamarck talked about um, theory of use and disuse in evolution, which is not correct. Carolus Linnaeus or Carl Linnaeus um, talked about classification of living things into plants and animals. Afterwards, he was one that founded the sixth kingdom of living things, having kingdom Monera, Protista, Fungi. Um, plantae and animalia basically so that's those are the names of those are the relevance of those other scientists there you might want to rewind that is also relevant for this curriculum the efficiency of vitamin d will lead to what vitamin d is very essential for um strong bones so when you don't have enough vitamin d you are going to end up having scurvy as a child Sorry, I said scurvy, that's a mistake, please. You're going to end up having rickets as a child. Rickets, rickets. So it's going to look like this. So this is rickets, which means having low, um, cast, sorry, having low vitamin D will end up leading to scurvy. Wow. Rickets, please, that's a mistake. Rickets. And rickets means softening of bones. Now, because the bone of this child is soft, so the weight will press down on the legs and that will cause the leg to bend that way. All right. To some extent, if it is noted on time, it could be corrected if you, when if the child is still growing and you take some necessary things, it could actually get better to some extent. However, it doesn't only happen in children. It also happens in adults like this. And this one is called osteomalacia. Osteomalacia, meaning softening of bones in adults. So rickets is in children due to lack of vitamin D, and um, osteomalacia is in adults. Now, hear this. You can also listen. It is possible that the question can say refer to cal calcium. Calcium is also needed for bone formation so two of them will end up leading to rickets if care is not taken yes especially okay also lead, lead to let's say osteoporosis and all, all of those things the reason is because calcium will be absorbed when vitamin d is absent but when sorry when vitamin d is present let me say that again calcium will be absorbed into the bloodstream based on the presence of vitamin d now if there is no vitamin d calcium will not be absorbed and that will lead to softening of bone and all of that. So it's going to end up. So, so the two of them affect bone formation. So two of them can directly or indirectly lead to rickets or osteomalacia. I mean, vitamin D and calcium. All right. Now, let me quickly talk about the deficiency that will lead to beriberi 
or I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. I call it beriberi. Now, this one is going to due to lack of vitamin B1. That's thiamine. If you don't have enough thiamine, you're going to end up having um, um, beriberi. If you don't have enough of vitamin B3, that's niacin, you end up having uh, pellegra, all right? And if you don't have enough of vitamin C, which is called um, ascorbic acid, you will end up having scurvy. All right. One of the these is used for extrusion in earthworm. Contrary vacuole is used in unicellular organisms like amoeba. Flame cells are used in flatworms. Maphigian tubules are used in arthropods. While Nephridium is used in roundworms, of which that's our answer here. Of which earthworm is a segmented roundworm. All right. The following group of plants is the most advanced. Is the most advanced except? Okay. Okay. The least advanced here. Because it says except, that means others are advanced. It means which one is least advanced? The answer is D, thallophytes or thallophytic plants, which are the likes of your uh, filamentous algae called spirogyra, like that. So this is a um, thallophyte, so to say. So that's why it is, that's the answer. It's a very um, primitive. Um, plant. So the next one will be, if I was going to put this in hierarchy, this is number one, followed by um, bryophyte, followed by theridophyte, followed by spermatophyte. So that's like from the simplest to the most complex. So one is simplest, four is the most complex or advanced, so to say. Which of the following hormonal gland is located on top of the kidney? If you have seen my other videos from the same past question series, you might have seen this, but I'm going to do that here. This is the kidney, and on top of the kidney is a gland called adrenal gland. So, book will call it suprarenal. Supra means above, renal has to do with kidney, basically. So, the answer is adrenal gland. Adrenal gland. One of these is present in both plants and animals. From this option, of course, large vacuole is only in plant alone. Chloroplast is only in plant alone. Cell wall is only in plant alone. While cell membrane is common to both plant and animal. All right. So here, you can see this first layer is cell membrane. Mm, all right. Well, this is cell membrane also there so they both have cell membrane the only thing is that plant cell has additional structures and all of that which also animal cell has some structures which is not present in animal and plant cell when the solute concentration of the cell and its surrounding medium are the same the solution is said to be let's check this out so look at this this is hypotonic which means that the the surrounding fluid to this cell and this cell is less concentrated to the cell itself so in that case this cell will suck in water suck in water and end up bursting yes but for this this plant cell it won't burst because it has cell wall so cell wall is rigid cell wall can rupture so it just stays swollen and turgid that way however for animal cells which is which is up here that is going to burst like that's going to really really burst because the cell membrane is um um not rigid so here see what happens here let me go to this last part before I, so hypertonic solution means the solution is very conch is conch than the content of the cell so what will happen is water will be sucked out sucked out of the cell into the surrounding fluid that's by osmosis that we call that exosmosis which means fluid is moving out of the cell this first one is endosmosis fluid is moving into the cell so in this exosmosis you see the the cells will like shrink all right 
this this for for animal cells going to shrink for plant cells going to you can see that's called plasmolysis because now like i told you cell wall is rigid so cell wall will not shrink but the cell membrane plus the cytoplasm will shrink like that now for an isotonic solution which means the solute or the solution surrounding the cell is having the same amount of solute just with the cell so what happens here is water goes in and water goes out so the cell size is maintained so the answer is option c isotonic solution if this you can if it means you rewind this piece is we understand this concept all right the primary consumer in the food chain below is the primary consumer of course i told you the primary consumer is always the one which is a herbivore that feeds on the plants and that's going to be all those ones here so from what we have here grass or par is a herbivore in this food chain that will feed on the plants and the next one that feeds on that is called the secondary um, producer sorry consumer which is always a carnivore or omnivore but most time carnivore so the answer here is going to be grasshopper angiosperms belong to the class uh, spermatophytes all right those are called spermatophytes basically those are advanced categories of plant species in the kidney both useful substances and waste products or waste are removed from the blood by filtration so this is what we have here filtration yes so blood goes in like that as it's passing through this glomerulus like that passing through this glomerulus all the waste products not only waste products good products which are very soluble where are, which are very small we call it pass through this and go in like that that's going to be that's called glomerular filtrate the one that are useful the body will reabsorb the body will reabsorb back into the bloodstream so once this has gone here the blood continues joining like that as a clean filtered blood all right, so it is filtration that removes both the good things and the waste product from the blood. Which of the following is not part of the mammalian male reproductive system? Mammalian male. Attempt this question, please, before answering, before listening to my explanation. Epididymis is part of it. What does it do? That's where sperm cell is formed. Vas deferens is otherwise known as sperm ducts that transport sperm from epididymis to um the urethra and all of that the testis of course is the site of spermatogenesis in a cell called seminiferous tubo but the vulva is found in the female which is the entire opening of the urethra and the vagina together in the female let me show you what that looks like in a moment so this is the male of course looking at this you definitely see like there's nothing like vulva here but of the female you have this structure like this so the vagina opening and urethra opening which is used for urination only in female this whole structure is called the vulva so to say and the all the um labia majora labia minora that covers the vagina and all of that are called all the structure forms the vulva and that's fine the female that's why we chose so the answer is going to be d please the answer is D. The answer is D there. Which of the following reagent is used for testing the presence of protein in food? Okay, but then the solution is for simple sugar, filling solution is for sugar. Million reagents is used to test for protein in food. So that's the answer. Well, Sudan re Sudan 3 is used to test for fat. Now, please hear this. This million reagent is not, it's being used, but it's not specific enough like this other one I'm showing you here. Buret is specific for testing for proteins and amino acid in the food substance. So I want you to pause the video here so to see some of this test. All right, all right, just pause the video here. I don't want to, it's self explanatory. See what happens. Positive test means it is present, negative result means it is absent, so to say. All right. 
The breaking down of food in the alimentary canal is called that's going to be digestion. When you break down food from complex structures into simpler ones, that's called digestion. Digestion is removal of undigested food substances. Excretion is removal of metabolic waste product. Ingestion is the eating, like swallowing or obtaining, no, like swallowing of food, basically, that way. The following are the functions of the kidney, except regulation of water content in the blood, that's called osmoregulation, it does that, that's correct. Maintenance of blood pH and homeostasis, it does that majorly, that's correct. Extraction of carbon dioxide, that's done by the lungs. So the answer here is C. But what did this say? This is removal of waste product from the blood, we saw that not quite long, so it also does that too, so the answer is C. The function, sorry, the following disrupt the balance in an ecosystem except disrupt means to scatter, to make, to tamper with. So deforestation, migration, and pollution can actually affect the balance of, of an ecosystem. Yes, if the plant, if, if you cut down the trees, that means there won't be um, habitat for arboreal animals. If animals migrate into that place or migrate out, either of the way, it's going to affect predator and prey relationship. The predator might be more and the prey will become lesser. Pollution, of course, can destroy plants and animals. But afforestation, which means planting of um, trees to replace the one that has been um, cut down, is called afforestation. And that is definitely going to create a balance. So you say which of the following will balance, will disrupt, except so all these four, all B, C, D, we disrupt it, all right? Only A will uh, maintain it, so the answer is A. The following animals are viviparous, except viviparous means animals that give back to their young ones alive. So that's gonna be, uh, it, says, it says except, Pigeon, which is oviparous, which lays egg. Pigeons are oviparous, they lay eggs. So these ones are all viviparous. They give back to their young ones alive. The following animals are invertebrate, which means without backbone, except what? So flatworms don't have backbone, roundworms don't have backbone, backbone, uh, protozoa don't have backbone, but codates at least. Most of the codates have backbones. So the answer is C. The following are the diseases, are kidney diseases that are found. That means that happens in the kidney except for hepatitis. Hepatitis affects the liver. As a matter of fact, the liver cells are called hepatocytes. So hepatitis means infection of the um, hepatocytes, so to say, or infection of the liver cells. That's why it is hepatitis, that's B, that's the answer there. The gland that release hormones into the blood are part of the, that secret hormones. Those are called endocrine glands, or some books will call it um, ductless gland. Why are they called ductless gland? This is the reason why. This is a gland that is having hormone in it. So what happens is the hormone is secreted into the space of the cell. From the space of the cell, it diffuses into the bloodstream. And the bloodstream, in the bloodstream, it is taken to where it is needed, like that. So there's no duct. That's it's called ductless. Some other glands have a duct that will take it to where it is needed, like that. But in the case of those ones, there's no duct that sends it there. Rather, it releases its content into the bloodstream. From the bloodstream, it is taken to the target cells. All right. One of the following is called emergency hormone in man. I think this is quite easy. I believe you, you, you mentioned adrenaline. That's the answer. Prolactin is used. It's found, it's, it helps to form milk in the body of females. All right. It helps to form milk, please. While 
testosterone is responsible for secondary male sexual characteristics and thyroxine helps in um, metabolism of um, food or let's just say it controls metabolism and some other kind of things anyways so this is adrenaline that is found in the adrenal gland as a matter of fact adrenaline was named after the gland that is that secretes it which of the following responses is not voluntarily controlled by the brain that you're not thinking about it before doing it that should be sneezing sneezing is a reflex so as i see sneezing is a reflex you, when you have an irritant ar along your nostrils you're going to sneeze it out and you don't have to think about it so it's not voluntary the scientific study of life of course is this very subject we are solving or this very subject you've known me for that's biology that's biology now the access sorry the artery or the artery supplying the liver with blood is the as the name implies hepatic artery hepatic artery mesenteric artery supplies the small intestine the renal artery supplies the kidney the subclavian subclavian which means below the clavicle artery supplies the upper limb all right all that is noted so let me show you something here now as it is here so this one of course this is the artery supplying the whole body so a part of its branches to supply the the liver and that's called hepatic artery which carries oxygenated rich blood while it has finished doing its thing the liver all the waste product sorry all the deoxygenated blood from it is taken to the uh this is called it should be inferior vena cava actually so it takes it to the inferior vena cava that way all right now there's something i want you to remember you can be asked that what is the name of the artery that con connects the small intestine to the liver the name is hepatic portal vein which carries um, nutrient rich food so when food has, is done digesting in the stomach it goes to the small intestine then it is being absorbed in the ileum before going into the general circulation it must then first go to the liver for screening all right so after it's being screened the liver passes it on like that to, before it goes into circulation all right from that is noted that's why when people are being killed by poison in their food you are going to see the traces of poison in the liver because the liver will always try to screen the food you are eating okay one of the following exists as colony colony means like a group of independent cells that decide to stay together they can actually live independently but decide to stay together and that answer is volvox volvox please they can actually stay they are independent organisms that decide to stay together independent algae like that that's colony of volvox volvox the translucency in food food test shows the presence of uh, okay of fat now let me show you why it is fat check this out now you can actually do this by yourself at home please get some granite granite oil or a normal granite um, nut so to say just um crush it on a white paper crush it somehow then when you crush you're going to see some sort of something that looks like that looks like this on that then you're going to put that paper close to a light source you will be able to see that the light source you can the light source is going to be able to pass through i mean you will see some reflection of light that's what it means for something to translucent transparent is actually different transparent means that you can see through something but for this one that is translucent not transparent you just see that there's you will be able to see some traces of light on that paper on that part that shows that the 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 substance is oily which is uh fat as it were of which here is water that was there you won't be able to see anything really 
you cannot allow light to pass through. So that is a, 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 some, one of the, um, a test to confirm that something has fat in it. All right. The following are examples of oviparous, except oviparous, like I told you, means egg laying um, organism. And from what we have here, crocodile lays egg, dove does, tilapia does. So it is only rat here, that's our answer, which is viviparous, which means it um, gives birth to its young ones alive. That's what that means. All right, let me explain at this point that there's other organism called ovo viviparous now what that means is that they have eggs they are going to be pregnant with egg and the egg will be fertilized in them and retaining them until maturity so it's either this animal will lay its egg once it lays its egg is going to match like hatch immediately in fact sometimes i've often heard about um, an example is viper that it can even hatch into a new snake inside the mother, mother, mother's body and sometimes I don't know if this is true that it can actually eat out the body of the mother all right so basically it means oviparous is like you are retaining a fertilized egg inside your body and you're going to lay the egg once you lay the egg the egg is going to get matured but for oviparous they just lay their egg outside probably sit on it like birds would do or walk away like um, reptiles would do and bury this, the, the, the egg in the soil. Those are oviparous. All right. Now, the part of cell that is responsible for the production of energy is, I guess you mentioned mitochondrion. Those are, that, that's the structure that produces cells, that produces energy for the cell. The nucleus controls all activity of the cell. Cytoplasm controls is is the site where chemical reaction occurs it's also the part that contains um, um all the cell organelles while the cell membrane is what selects what goes in and out so it's a selective membrane that selects what goes in and out of a cell hormones that regulate blood calcium are produced by thyroid parathyroid gland now, parathyroid gland is found, let's see, this is the thyroid gland, like that. At the back of thyroid gland, you have one, two, three, four. These four structures are called parathyroid gland. And what do they produce? They produce a hormone called parathyroid hormone, or some people could call it parath hormone. All right. What do they do? It increases... Um, calcium level in the blood. How does it do that? Let me show you that in a minute. Now, basically, what happened is this. Let's say there is, you can see it here, there's low calcium level in our body. So it is. it has become lower than 100, sorry, than, um, what's it called? 11 milligram per 100 mil of blood. At that point, when it's lower than that, 9 to 11, what happened is going to send a signal to what? So the, can you see what I said here? So this is the thyroid gland, but you can see the parathyroid gland around. That's why it's called para, like around the thyroid gland. That would do what we release what's a hormone called parathyroid hormone, PTH, otherwise called parath hormone. What would that do? So that's the parathyroid. What will it do? It will go to the bone cells. So this osteoclast is found in the bone cell. What will it do? Break the matrix, not all the way to some extent. Osteoclast is the type of um, bone cells that breaks bone cells in a reasonable way anyways for remodeling for remodeling of bones or for release of calcium ions into the blood so that's what it does when it does that that will end up restoring calcium level to what it ought to be so it helps to increase calcium level all right which of the following statement is true is not true of a fish the respire with the use of gills that's correct Call with skill, that's correct. They are homeothermic. No, they are not. They are parkilothermic, which is D. So this C is the answer. They are not homeothermic. Homeothermic means they are warm-blooded. Parkilothermic means they are cold-blooded. So the answer is C. They are not warm-blooded. Which of the following is not a waste product of plants? Well, 
this first answer is the answer which this first option is the answer auxins are growth hormone in the body of plants while these other three are waste products though some of them might actually be useful but they are waste products as far as plant is concerned all right so auxin is a growth hormone so that's a waste product an association between bacteria and root node of legume is called before we answer that question i want you to look at this quick closely and you're going to tell me what you think it is so these are um bacteria in the body in the root nodules and the, one of the, the name is rhizobium what will it do it will help to convert can you see that nitrogen in the air into nitrates nitrates which this plant can use at the same time this plant will photosynthesize make some food and part of the food will get to this um, rhizobium the bacteria in the roots of in its roots so to say so that means they are both benefiting what does that mean that is mutualism mutualism is a mutualistic relationship between the two organisms involved there which of these is not detected by the nerve endings of the skin or you, know, you can say which of the following can the skin not detect so to say so let's look at this now all of these are free nerve endings for this one feels detects pain cold and heat this one michael this de detect torch cryos and will also detect touch uh, root nerve plexus all of these you can see what they detect touch pressure that's passing up corpuscles raffini and it's also develop pre um, pre um, pressure so all of these are what they detect so which you can see from this option cold is in this diagram pain is in diagram pressure is in, di in this diagram but weakness cannot be there's no receptor on the skin for we to detect weakness so the answer is d you want to pause the video here to look at those free nerve endings and what they do and their names behavior conditioning was described by who okay that was discovered by um ivan pavlov a russian physiologist what conditioning means is like training an animal to to merge on unrelated cues or stimuli together let me show you what that means now this is what happened originally it is known that he notices that normally um a uh, a dog will salivate when he sees bone that's what they love bones a lot now so what he did was he was going to, he was ringing a bell he would just every now and then he would ring a bell to his, its dog there's no response no salivation at all so what he did was he will now ring the bell and also bring the food at the same time so sorry let me show that let me do that part so he's going to ring the bell of course and bring the bone at the same time so what happened is that the the the, the animal the dog notices that it seems that once there is a bell that means there's going to be a food so two of them so it has seen the bell and the food the sound of the bell the ringing of the bell and the food together so it has associated it together as conditioning all right so the bell plus food will lead to salivation all right which means the the the, the animal has now associated sound which is auditory with the bones and the response he gives is to salivate, which means it expects food to come. So what he did was, after he has done that for a while, he now rang the bell alone. And what happened was, the animal still salivated. That means it has conditioned sound with the bone, which is being fed with. So even without the food, once it hears the bell, even alone, it's going to salivate, thinking that there's going to be food. So the man that did that is Ivan Pavlov. The process by which organisms keep their internal condition relatively stable is homeostasis. And that is seen in homeothermic or warm-blooded animals, so to say. The following exists as free living organisms except. Well, all of these ones, all of the members, 
which are Clamadomonas, Euglena, and Paramis and, and, and Parogia, can live on their own. Free living means they can they don't they don't operate as parasites in any way, they just live on their own without depending on any other organism. But amoeba, there's there are other species of amoeba that can actually um, be a parasite to humans. For example, we have um, um, entamoeba histolytica, which causes liver abscesses. This is parasitic in nature, all right? So, so these other ones are all free living all the way, but amoeba has some of its members that can actually be a parasite to humans or other organisms. The basic functional unit of the kidney is, please, anytime you hear this word, basic, basic functional unit, it means that that structure, that thing is what does the major work in the structure. If I say this is a box and I say this small circle is the basic unit of this box, it means that what this box is known for is majorly done by this guy. The small circle, like the, and, and that's number one. Number two is that sm all of these small circles put together will make up this box. So it's like the smallest unit of something is the, is like putting that thing together to form that whole structure. And each of those small tiny structure does the major function of that bigger structure that is seen. So in this case here, the structure that does what the kidney does really, or that makes up the kidney is the nephron there. So the answer is, the answer is nephron, option A. You can see, so all of the kidney as you move like that is made up of nephron majorly. And what does the nephron do? It's the one that does the filtering of the blood and some other things like that. Snails belong to phylum. Please, if you probably don't understand all these things, I will implore you to please watch my video on taxonomy, please. All right. Um, that's phylum mollusca. Example of Annelida will be your earthworm, ragworm, and all of those, uh, and leeches. While example of Echinodermata will be your starfish. While your nematode will be your ranworm, which is Ascaris lubricoides, which is found in humans. Ascaris, ran on segmented worm. All right. Which of the following is not a pest of crop that does not affect crops. Birds affect crop. Rodents affect crops. Bed bug. Wow. That does not affect crops. That affects humans. It an ectoparasite in humans, which sucks humans' blood. Of course, grasshopper is a very um, prominent pest of um, crops. Another name for a fertilized egg is... Oh. We can call it zygote, please. When you get this is, is an egg, this is sperm fertilizing it, so we can call this, it's going to become a structure called zygote, zygote. I think that should be easier for you to remember. Plants that survive in marine habitat are called plants like this, that they, 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 they live in water like this, are called hydrophytes. And I've told you before that xerophytes are found in the desert, Mesophytes are found on the normal soil. White halophytes are the ones that love salt. Salt-loving plants are called halophytes. Halophytes. All right. The study of plants, interesting, will be called what? Um, botany. And the study of animal will be called zoology. All right. Botany, study of plants, zoology, study of animals. The following are examples of airborne diseases except airborne, airborne, airborne. Okay, chicken boss is airborne, but cholera is waterborne to some extent through fly, through touch, all of that. But those three are all airborne, so it's cholera that is not airborne. That's the answer there. Which of the following is the end product of the digestion of oil? Oh, that's like fat and oil. When you break down fat and oil, which is otherwise called triglycerides, it's going to break into fatty acid and glycerol. Glycerol. So, which of these options have one of these two in it? That's option B. 
glycerol. So fat or oil is broken down into fatty acid and glycerol. The fat that supplies blood, so that supplies food from the body, from the mother to the fetus is that supplies food. Hmm. Supplies the food. That would be the placenta. Yes. Umbilical cord only connects the child to the placenta. But the placenta connects the mother to the child, and that placenta is the one that, that is used to send in food, like this placenta, to the child through the umbilicus and the um, umbilical cord. And the, the child will also send the waste product like that back to the mother's body through the umbilical cord to the placenta. Now, which of these is not a part of the eye, the human eye? So I want you to look at this for, like, for some few seconds, of which I meant to know this offhand anyways, because you will be given diagrams to see your exam. I just brought this to some, some sort of re, um, reminder for you. Of course, the cochlea is the answer. That is found in the inner ear. That's the part of the ear we use for vision. So you can see here, this is conjunctiva. This is cornea there and this is iris there so all of these are found in the eye except for the cornea which so except for the cochlea which is found in the inner ear of mammalian ear the oxygenated blood that means oxygen blood pouring oxygen is transported to the lungs through what through the only artery that carries the oxygenated blood pulmonary artery let me show you that Yes, in pulmonary circulation, you can see pulmonary circuits. So the pulmonary artery, which is what I'm going to trace out now, takes the oxygenated blood to the lungs. So when that, the oxygenated blood is given off as carbon dioxide, that goes out, then oxygen goes in like that, into the, from the lungs back to the heart by the pulmonary vein, the only vein that carries oxygenated blood. There are four of them that actually goes into the heart. So you might pause the video here to um, look, take a look at this some more. But basically, the pulmonary artery carries the oxygenated blood. One of the following is the unit of life. I told you unit means like the smallest part of that thing, and that's going to be the cell because the cell is de de defined as the basic structural and functional unit of life. I used to call it BSF of life. Basic structural and functional unit of what? Of life. That's what cell is. Now the next question here says, the following are examples of a true fruit except. Now I will call your attention to some few things now. A true fruit is a fruit formed from a fertilized ovary or ovaries or ovaries without any other parts of the flower. What other plants of flower am I talking about? Petals is not involved. Sepals is not involved. Um, receptacle is not involved. But a first fruit will, will be formed from ovary or ovaries plus any of these ones. Once any of these ones is added to a fruit, it has become false. From what we have here, the answer is pineapple, which is formed from inflorescence of flower, like you have flowers fused together to form it. So that is a false fruit. It is, we used to call it a multiple or composite fruit, all right, which is formed from inflorescence of flower. Why all these other ones are basically simple fruits? Or let me say, they are, they are, all, they are all true fruits, all right. The vector that transmits trypanosome, which causes simply sickness, is the Sese fly, which looks um, like this. This is a sese fly that transmits the, vet, the pathogen called um, trypanosome. Mm, all right. So this is the vector. The following are ductless gland, except I told you 
a ductless gland, a gland that secretes hormones, and they secrete their fluid directly in the body fluid into, sorry, into, into the interstitial fluid from there into the blood. Then the blood will not take it to where it is needed. So it means one of these is going to be that kind of, uh, sorry, it says the following are ductless gland except. So it means three of these will be ductless gland that secrete hormones, one of them will not be. So from what I'm going to show you here, so this, so it means that this is a ductless gland. So think of gland that secretes hormones, adrenal gland secretes hormones, pancreatic, pancreas also secretes hormone, and um, parathyroid gland secretes hormone. However, salivary gland, can you see it here? As a duct, secretes saliva here, and there's a duct that takes it to where it is needed. So we call that a an exocrine hormone, oh, sorry, an exocrine gland that has a duct. So the answer here is salivary gland. Salivary gland, please don't forget that. Salivary gland is, now let me say it here, that pancreas actually is a confused gland. Why? It has ducts to secrete enzymes. It also has, it, it also has um, glands that secrete hormones. So you can, you might have seen this other question I solved that pancreas can secrete enzymes, so it is called uh, a, a, a digestive enzyme, um, what's it called? It's called an exocrine gland because it has gland that has tube or duct that can use to secrete enzymes. And it also has gland that does not, that secretes hormones, and that hormone are secreted directly into the bloodstream. So in case you probably see me talk about pancreas also as a duct gland, is because it also, it has the two of them, all right? White blood cells are also called leukocytes. So white blood cells are put into categories and we call them, so these ones I'm going to be ticking. So these three are called granulocytes. These other two are called agranulocytes. These ones are called granulocytes because they have granules in their cytoplasm. You can see granules there. Why the agranulocytes are called? Because they don't have granules. There's no granules and cytoplasm. So of course you can see that this leukocyte is the name for all white blood cells. Of course, monocyte, so lymphocyte is a type, phagocyte is a type. Now phagocyte is based on function. Phagocytes are cells, are white blood cells that can engulf the, its, um, that can engulf cells. An example of that is monocytes and neutrophils. Monocytes and neutrophils have ability to engulf like that, to engulf a cell like that. So they are called phagocytes. The removal of remnant particles of digestion, keyword, remnant particles of digestion from the body is called, from of digestion, that would be ejection. That's like going to the toilet. That's ejection. While extrusion is removal of metabolic waste, which most times are either liquid or gases, basically. But ejection is like we're passing out a large, sorry, not a large, solid, semi-solid substances, so to say. So I want to pause the video here to read. Oh, okay, I thought I added, wow, I thought I added a, a, a picture to show you the differences between extrusion and elimination, sorry, extrusion and um, um, ejection. Well, I hope that explanation is clear enough. Uh, ejection is removal of undigested food substances from the alimentary canal, while extrusion is removal of waste product like carbon dioxide, sorry, I mean, a metabolic waste like carbon dioxide, maybe urea from the skin and all of that. Then the last one says enzyme thialin, which is in the mouth, act on starch in the mouth. Oh, I already mentioned that it's in the mouth. And what does it do? It converts starch to maltose. That's what it does. All right, I think that will be all for now. Okay, I think I, only, I was able to get 68 questions from that year. So I'm going to see you the next um, past question 2016. Do have a wonderful day.